Easy guys, uh, we're here today at what's referred to as King's Bastion. Um, just to clarify to everyone, it isn't actually the Bastion. Bastion is a point fortification, uh, a point of the fortification where they're able to defend from. Where we're going into is what will probably be classed more as the casemates at the King's Bastion. Um, and there is a later edition of a World War II air raid shelter that actually has been dug out from the side of it. Um, it's only a small little section. Um, it's part of the much, much larger uh, Fort Amherst. Um, but it's, it's, it's a nice little bit and it gives a, a little bit of a show uh, on top of all the other bits that we've uh, filmed from around here. So we'll go in, we'll give you a show around and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. So what this would have consisted of, um, underground here, what we've entered into would have been one of the first defendable um, positions where they would have actually been able to fire out into the dry moat if the enemy had started advancing up there and made it into there. Um, it's a very sort of defendable position that they had here. It wouldn't have been as open as it is now uh, to get into. Um, but of course, as you can see, hey, it's the same as most of the other um, forts that we've been to around the area. Um, same brickwork, same archways. And uh, as you can see, over the years, of course, a lot of a lot of rubbish has been brought down. And to be fair, it takes quite a bit of conviction to bring a shopping trolley all the way down to it. That's quite impressive. This would have been the, the second room. You'd have been able to fire out onto the ne'er do wells that were sat out in in your dry moat. <laughs> <laughs> and then it would have led further in. So we're now of course behind the dry moat wall. Now, as I said outside, there was a later edition of a World War II air raid shelter dugout. Um, where do you want to go to first, don't they? Yeah, I'll say down there. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. Right. Now, it is a bit sketchy in here, guys. Um, of course, the floor wouldn't have been this high. The floor would have been the same, the same level as the tunnel. Um, and the actual roof line would have run across here. Now, over the years, of course, the uh, roof has caved in bit by bit um, and raised the floor level. So if you don't come down here at all, be careful. Don't touch the walls, don't touch the ceiling. With the air raid shelter dugout bit, it was split off into two tunnels that connected at the far end. All dug out by hand. Um, I'll be guessing that this was probably done a bit more towards the end of the war because it's a bit more sort of slapdash compared to sort of some of the more, the more purpose built ones from around the area um, and some of the other ones that we have filmed and we will get uploaded at one point or another. Um, as you can see it was crudely carved out and then lined with a corrugated sheet metal um, at the end of the day I suppose it would have definitely given a bit more a bit more cover than being out in the bombs but it would have probably been very sketchy if you was down here and the bomb went off near. You'd probably get lumps of uh, chalk and dirt falling down quite quickly. 
Now, of course, at the end of the Second World War, with most stuff, it all got locked up. I'm going to crawl up there a little bit more stump, you'll be able to get a, get a better view up there. Um, as you can see, there would have been a uh, brick entrance that would have come directly down into here, so people wouldn't have had to actually go down into the dry moat to get in. Um, and then at the end of the war, that would have all just been backfilled to make sure, um, well, as they put it back then, that criminals didn't move in and have somewhere to hide. So that's why a lot of them got all blocked up at the end. And we'll go back and we'll go down the other side. Um, there is, of course, a lot of a lot of rubbish that's been left down here over the years. A lot of people come down drinking. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be a lot of period rubbish that's been left. I might get the odd little bit of metal that is probably from something back in the day. Oh, yeah, no, that might have been might, no, ba yeah, base of a base of an oil lamp. I'd be guessing this was probably something to do with it as well. That would have sat on top. That would have come up and that would have been what would have held the glass. Coming up from that, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. I'll put it back. But of course, where all the walls have crumbled away and everything else like that, any of the original graffiti that would have been carved in whilst people were sat down here is uh, long gone. Loads of Aussies down there. Oh. It's not nice, nice to hit when you're in the tunnel. <laughs> Good old night, man. Nice to put the shits every now and then. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, that leads back up to that pile there. Well, he's pretty cool. He's down here. A lot of this would have been the original barbed wire that would have uh, gone around the top and sort of defended the top quite a bit. Now, what is pretty cool, see that metal bar there? It's got the curls in it. They, they would have been stuck into the ground and that's what would have held the barbed wire. So barbed wire would have come in reels. I would have put one either side, stuck one of the ends of the reels of the barbed wire pulled it across and then attached it with that on the other side and then that's where you get the sort of like coiled barbed wire that goes across and it's those bits that actually uh, yeah, hold it either end so that's 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 all World War Two period which is pretty cool yeah. Then we'll, we'll go back and we'll carry on up the, uh, the Napoleonic part. I wonder if uh, any, anyone's tried digging out underneath the stairs anymore. <laughs> oh. That bit's ready to fall. Must be crack on the ceiling. Uh, it's ready to go. Right. Not mine, thank you. <laughs> nope. Yeah, 
think um, originally above the stairwell was would have been some sort of guard house. There's that's a big block of brick, and the amount of brick that's in here. It looks like they've caved it in to fill the tunnels with the bubble. Ah, oh, that's it. it. Just sort of collapsed it in on itself. Oh, yeah, you might as well go for this. I think we'll be able to break quite a bit of that. So that's a bit of a squeeze. Do you want to pass it in? Yeah, cool. Oh, that's a good one. Cheers. Yeah, that's it. Six foot above uh, where the floor used to be. Oh God, maybe, yeah. maybe more. Maybe, maybe a little more. You can normally stand up with most of the tunnels around you with a bit of head space. There's only about seven foot, maybe eight foot floor to ceiling. So, well, you know, I don't know, maybe only about four or five foot off. But I suppose just the vent hole above, above us. There's a hole above there. Yeah. On those vents. Now why, why would you have a vent in what's supposed to be known as a storage area? Yeah, that's a good point. Shine a light up it. Going up. Nothing on this side. <laughs> so no. don't come out up there. No. That's interesting. Yeah, you wouldn't need a uh, air vent if it it was just a small store cupboard. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely something to watch out for. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll have a little explore further. So guys, so yeah, carry on watching the channel. We'll bring that to you. Do you want me to grab that No worries. Oh, hello, oh, right. there's one there and all. Oh. That one goes off to the side. Left or right? Uh, to my right. Uh, this one goes behind me, if that helps. Towards you. Towards me. Yeah. So yeah, these yeah. these two lead up into into the same place. So the wall on your right is a lot thicker than you would imagine. Yeah. Because the stairs don't run on the other side of this wall. No, they're a bit. Yeah, they come out like that. There's like a triangle almost. Huh. So yeah, those two lead up to that. Quite possibly. I think I think Stumpy said he's got his string. Look where the pipe yeah. is as well. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's one of the pipe. We can roughly work that out. That's about six foot from the pipe and the pipeline. Work out the pipeline, we can work out where these holes come up ish. Yeah, I'm sorry, man, I'll move out your way now. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> sort of stood around just trying to work these things out, leaving you an old. Sorry, man. <laughs> but just the way it's all so. So if they build this, this, this is a junction area. Right, so yeah, back out into this sort of little junction room. Um, and then off the other tunnel leads up the spiral staircase. I'll let you go, go first again, stumping out. Yeah, yeah. 
do this once again. It's a nice little squeeze in there. <laughs> So this would have originally been a stairwell that would have gone up to the surface and there would have been most likely a uh, guardhouse or some sort of position up there that this, this would have popped out into. You can see it's been boarded over but that board is just literally waiting to give. Um, I always get worried about walking on top of the tri up here as well. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to know it comes out there. Yeah. I don't know what kind of up there too much. That's it. Yeah, that's it. The stairs have got to be quite a bit below this and all. Yeah. You see, we can put the water pipe straight through the old brickwork. That is lovely through this minute. bit. Lift that. Yeah, straight through there. what I'm stood on is like the original bit so I'm I'm six foot just over so that's got to be what seven foot and I think this is the floor it looks quite compact yeah. and warped on so yeah it's got to be at least this this deep through yeah. the other tunnels I was hunched into like the third, top three foot of that kind of that's it guys this is um this is what people call King's Bastion but isn't actually the bastion itself which is part of the tunnel system that's near the bastion um hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, yeah keep watching for our videos <laughs>